Okay, everybody. Good morning to you. I hope you're doing well. Um, I have graded your test one, so let's take a look here. Here's what you guys want to do. Um, under the module section called what? Study guide and test solutions. What do you guys see here? Yes, test one solution. So what you want to do is compare what you have with these solutions. So um, you say, am I going over where you made your mistakes? Actually, you are going over where you made your mistakes. Um, so that's why I provide the test solutions there for you. Uh, as soon as it uploads, looks like it's one and a half megabytes. So anyway, I don't know if you guys have gotten that um, last night because I uploaded that at last night. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonder how long that'll take. Okay. And I will be passing back your test one to you guys today as well. Uh, let me think about that. I think there was how many check mark opportunities? Something like 40 something check mark opportunities. Um, which you'll see on your, I'm sorry, 45 check mark opportunities. There we go, finally, there we go, solutions. And as you guys can see, 45 checks. So yes, you know, what you had to enter there, there's 15 checks. Uh, 12 checks on that sheet. Uh, and then what I was looking for here is 14 checks. And then there's four checks here. So remember, you know, two for each. Whenever you graph, excuse me, a histogram, you need boundary values. So you're not free to draw any picture you like. Okay, you guys understand what I'm saying? And, and then again, for the frequency table, it's frequency and the midpoints of the bins. This is why you wanted to find midpoints. So you say, why did you ask me for midpoints? Well, that was to help direct you for graphing, you know, just like we just did. So anyway, if you add all those up, it's about 45 check marks, so you can see where that is. And then this is some of the work behind it all, okay, that we did. Uh, and then, again, it's the work that you have here as well. So it's all there. So you guys want to double check where you went right, where you went wrong. You know, you do that. I give it to you guys at the end so that you can pay attention to lecture. Um, because sometimes if you pass it out in the beginning, people weren't paying attention to anything. You know. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. So you guys will get that today. So where we really left off was this thing I wrote down called a Z value. Okay, so you say, okay, what do, what do we start to transition? So last week, what might have been on your test, what was, what's supposed to be on your test, but I was absent, is something called a Z value. Or a standard value, right? Standardization value. Standard value, Z value, all those nice things, okay? So this is the formula that we can use to generalize the curve. Okay, so let me go back and you say, what was the curve anyway? If I go back over here, let me try to find, this was the definition of your curve, right? So let me copy a bunch of, let me copy this. So if we can get that going. And then you say, well, we're going to generalize this. You say, what do you mean? Yeah, we're going to look at this particular scale called a Z-scale. Right? So this is going to be a Z-scale. I'm going to put Z there. And in the center is the number zero. And let me kind of 
do this if I can. Let's get rid of this. And I want you guys to focus on this value here, right? What I'm about to say is that your mean is really zero on the Z scale. Okay, the mean is really zero. And then you might say, why? How does that mean this X bar become zero? So remember, X is your arbitrary data values. So there's, there's X values on this real number line. So if I go back up here to this Z value formula, this is what you guys want to write down. Okay. And I plug in for X the mean, right? So I'm going to plug this in. If I plug that in, what happens as a z-score? What do you guys think we get? What is z equal? Zero over s, and what is zero divided by anything? Zero. So here's my point, that the mean value that I just plugged in this formula here, okay, that really becomes zero as a z-score here. So the idea is to convert all these values to Z values. And you say, well, what about this over here? What does, what does remember, this C grade give you, right? So if I go back and just remove some of those colors here, and this is what I'm focusing on now, is what does the X value become? Or this, sorry, the mean. And what's the mean plus the standard deviation? and the mean minus. What do those become as Z values? Well, plug them in the formula. And now we have the mean plus S, and that's gonna give us what? S over S, what equals what? S over S is what? One. So that value is a positive one now. Okay, so what I'm doing is I converted the mean plus the standard deviation, and that will be one on the Z scale. What do you think the mean minus the standard deviation will be if I plug that in, right? Do you guys know what that'll, that'll become? Over here? Well, it it's differed only by a sign. Yeah, so that's gonna be what? Negative S over S, which is negative one now. And there you go. So we're going to do the same thing over here now. So what do you think this becomes? X bar plus 2S. And over here, right? X bar minus 2S. What do those things become? All right, let's double check. So replace that now with the X bar plus 2S, algebraically speaking and the X bars go away, you're just gonna be left with what? 2S over S, your S is cancel. what's this gonna be? Z is what, two? Okay. And then you say, well, what about if it was negative? Well, if it was negative, that's negative. This is negative. So you have really in some ways, all the values here as z-scores were here there's a C, here there's a B, anything bigger than 2 is an A, D, and F. So you can actually use the z-scale for grading on a curve, okay? However, you don't have to. And in fact, what did we start the lecture by saying? This is... The Z value is a what? Generalization of the curve. So we can generalize the curve by a Z value. All right, you guys okay with that? Generalize, and you say, what do you mean? Why would we need to generalize? Well, here's the idea, just to let you guys know. Let me erase this 
here for us. Okay, for the moment. But here's really the idea behind it. Okay. We have a problem. Like if I said to you, you know what the, the, the height of men in the U.S.? Do you guys happen to know what is the um, average height of a male in the United States? What do you guys think it is? It's actually, yeah, I think it's 5'8", which is how many inches? It's 68 inches. You know what the standard deviation is going to be? What's S, the standard deviation? It's 2.9 what? Inches. Okay. So when we're looking at a Z value that we gave you here, this is a measure of what we call relative position. Do you guys know what that means to say measure relative position? Okay. You guys know what a relative position idea, just kind of in the cocktail party language, if it ever comes up in your life, what is relative position? Right? What do you guys think that might be? It's everywhere. So we're starting to focus on the relative position of data values. It's like, where are you in relation to everyone else? Okay. Where are you in relation to a, a particular group? Where, where is your position in all of this? Okay. Can you guys hold on for a quick second here?
Right. I apologize again. Uh, where were we? Relative position. So where are you in relation to who? Everybody else. Okay. Can I say that again? Relative position. Where are you in relation to? Everybody else. Scary idea. Is that right? Relative position. Where are you in relation to everyone else? So remember, what does this represent or what's in purple? Purple's the mean. What's what's in red? Standard deviation. What does X represent? X is a what? Data value. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's kind of your first example. I want to express to you that, yes, you need the mean. You need the what? Standard deviation. And then I'm going to ask you guys here, let's list some people here, okay? Height of men, so you guys can understand the idea behind this. Do you guys know who Shaq is? Okay. How tall is Shaq? Do you guys know? Anybody know Shaq's height? Do you guys know how tall he is? He's actually seven foot one. But he tells everybody he's seven two. Just goes to show, what are, the, what are the things that men lie about? Their height, ladies and gentlemen. Men lie about their height. <laughs> so even Shaq, at seven foot one, has to add an inch. So how many, how many inches is seven foot one, by the way? Because this whole example is in inches. Do you guys know how many inches? Seven times 12 is 84 plus one. You know what? Shaq is, in inches, 85 inches. Let's compute Shaq's what? Z value. And ladies and gentlemen, your Z values are always approximated to the nearest hundredths. Hundredths position. Okay? So here's how you handle that, right? So go to the calculator again, and you're going to say what? What's the first number you guys put in? You got to put in the what? The X value. What do you guys think the X value is? It's your data value. So you're going to plug in. Let's write down the formula here so you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Z is any data value minus the mean. And in this case, it's what? 68 inches divided by the standard deviation of 2.9 inches. This is... This is for the height of men. So you're going to plug in 85 for X. Okay, you guys with me on that? All right, now, here's what you guys do. So we plug in 85 minus, what's the mean? 68, close that, divided by, what's the standard deviation? 2.9. And you're going to approximate this to the nearest what? Hundreds. What do you guys get as a Z score for Shaq? What is Shaq's Z value to the nearest hundreds? 5.8 what? Six. Okay. So this is Shaq's Z score. 5.86. Now let's talk about what this means here. So that Z value is 5.86. So... If I were to give Shaq a grade for his height, what's the problem? Anybody know? What's the problem with, with grading Shaq on height? Anybody know what the issue is? You really can't give him a grade, can you? You guys see what I'm saying? You can't really give him a grade. So here's my point to you. You have to now not think of it in terms of grades now. We're thinking this in terms of Z-scores. So what happens now here is this. Three, let me do this here. When you write down the Z-scale here,
positive one, negative one, positive two, negative two, positive three, positive four, positive five. Over here is six. What do you guys think Shaq's height would be? It's 5.86. It's close to what? It's close to six. Is that right? So if I were to label where Shaq is, he's about 5.86. That's above the what? Is that above zero? What does zero represent again? That's the mean. So I can't give Shaq a letter grade for his height. I have to go to a Z value because Shaq is really off the charts in terms of his height. Is that true? Is Shaq tall or is Shaq small? He's tall? So here's what that means, okay? I want you guys to know this here. We say the following. Shaq is more than what? You see this number 5.86? That's between 5 and 6. So we say he's more than 5, but those numbers represent standard deviations, so Shaq is more than five standard deviations, what we say, above the what? Mean. Okay? That's the meaning of the 5.86. That's how we start to measure Shaq, relatively speaking, in terms of his height. He is more than what? Let's look at the key, key words. Five standard deviations... Above the what? Mean. Because the mean, ladies and gentlemen, as a z-value is zero. And Shaq's z-score is 5.86. So any positive z-score is above the mean. Any negative z-score is below the mean because it's to the left of zero. And that number that we got represents the standard deviations. He's not quite six. And remember, what does standard deviation represent again? Standard deviation is what? Is that consistency? You see what I'm saying? All right. So there we go. That's where Shaq is. So what I like to do is express to you guys that you, you can't stick with the grading on a curve scale for everything. It works for test scores, but it does not work for what? Every single phenomena. Like the height, something simple as height, comparing people's height. Okay, now there's another person I like to use besides Shaq. I like to use Mini Me as a comparison. What is Mini Me's height? Height of Mini Me. How tall? How tall is Mini Me? Do you guys know who Mini Me is? I think he's two foot what? Four inches. Maybe I'm wrong. What's two foot four inches? Well, two times tall is 24 plus four is what? 28 inches. Okay. So that is a data value X. So for mini me now, you say, how would I compute mini me's? Oh, what? Z score X minus 68 over what? 2.9. So we're going to put 28. What is Z approximately? Let's see what that is. Twenty-eight minus what? Sixty-eight divided by two point nine. What do you get now? This is what? Negative thirteen point seven what? Nine. Okay. So I got the Z value, uh, negative what? 13.79. What do you guys think that represents? Being negative. What do you guys think that means, huh? Well, negative numbers on the Z scale, what do you guys know about mini me? That would be where negative three is, negative four. You know what? You guys know what the problem is? Mini-me is off the charts. 
I don't even have enough ice, iPad space to go to negative 13 and negative 14. Okay? So you say, what does that mean about mini-me? Let's write this down, right? The Z-score describes what mini-me is more than 13 standard deviations. You say, what do you mean more than 13? Well, it's between 13 and 14 on the negative side. Now, because it's negative, we say it's actually what? Below the mean. And what does the mean represent? Z is zero. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. It's more than 13 standard deviations where? Below the what? Below the mean. So where, you say, Mr. Judge. Mr. Judge's height, believe it or not, he is five foot what? Seven. So how many inches is Mr. Judge in his height? Do you guys know what five foot seven is? Five times 12 is 60 plus seven gives you what? It's 67 what? Inches. Z is X minus 68 over 2.9. So where is 67 at? Well, let's see. Parentheses, 67 minus 68, close that, divided by 2 point what? 9. What do you guys end up with here? What is the approximately? Negative point what? 3, 4. Okay, we always approximate to the what? To the hundredth hundredth position. So, what do you think this means about Mr. Judge? By the way, Mr. Judge is what? Where would he be on the Z scale? Where's negative point three four? Isn't it? It's it's negative, so it's to the left of zero. It's going to be maybe somewhere over here, right? It's not quite past what? That one, it's negative 0.34. Okay. So here's what we say about Mr. Judge and his height. Mr. Judge is less than, less than one standard deviation. Below the what? The mean. Why do we say less than one standard deviation below the mean? Z equals what? Zero. Okay, you guys okay with that? So if it's going to be in that range, we're going to say that's less than one. You say, how do we know it's less than one? Well, because this is the interval of one standard deviation. So it's not past that is what we're saying. And in fact, there's another way we want to look at this. This is the whole idea behind Z values. Do you guys remember with grading on a curve, what do we say here with the grading on the curve situation? Most people are where? Where are most people going to be? Right in the middle there between DC and B? You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to give you guys a definition here for Z values. This is what you really, why you really want to look at some of these values as well. Okay? A Z value is said to be 
unusual if the if it's going to be the following I guess we should say yeah if an absolute value it's greater than 2 now you might say Mr. Judge what do you what in the world does this even mean okay well back in the day I use purple for algebra, but okay. Back in the day when people studied algebra, you know, that dirty word, algebra. You know, this was actually algebra in intermediate algebra. Now, I know some of you guys know what this is. The graph, ladies and gentlemen, of the absolute value being greater than 2. This is as z-scores. Looks like this. Okay, you are what? Shading everything to the right of positive two, and you're shading everything to the what? Left of negative two. And these are called z-scores. This is what it means to be what? What's the term? Unusual. It's an unusual z-value, which means it's an unusual data value. Okay, so what's the point again of all these z-scores we just computed for the height? Which one of these are unusual? Mr. Judge's z-score is negative up 0.34. Did you guys tell me who has an unusual z-score? Where's the unusual uh, interval again? Anything bigger than 2 and anything smaller than what? Negative 2. That's the definition here. So if you guys remember some of those uh, absolute value inequalities there, that just popped up here. Okay? So who's unusual? Shaq. Good. So we're going to say yes for Shaq. He's unusually what? Tall. Good. You guys see the idea? Shaq is unusually tall. Okay. And then what about Mini Me? Well, Mini Me is unusual, but he's unusually what? Short. So the answer is a yes for those two. However, guess who's more unusual? Who do you guys think would be more unusual? Shaq or Mini Me? Why Mini Me? Why do you think it's more unusual to see a mini me than Shaq? You guys are looking at the you guys are looking at the idea right here. Cuz it's based on the mean and the standard deviation. Shaq is more than 5 standard deviations above the mean, but mini me is what? Less than 13 standard deviations below the mean. Remember, the standard deviation measures a consistency. So mini me is much more unusual than Shaq, by the way. Okay, so what do you guys think? Is Mr. Judge unusual in terms of his height? How do you guys know he's not unusual in his height? It doesn't satisfy, by the way, of definition of being unusual. Okay. In fact, Mr. Judge is where? He's pretty much right here. Well, he's first of all, he's in this region. Anything between negative two as a z score, 
if you look at that, you're not unusual. And I guess if we include the endpoints, we could do that there. But Mr. Judge is not unusual in terms of his height. If it were a grade, he gets a what? C, because he's ne between negative 1 and positive 1. So, you know, even though you can't really give grades here, all you can say is two things. Somebody's either unusual as a Z-score or they are not unusual. So that was kind of things that I asked on the first test that I didn't give you guys. And some of you guys may have looked at the study guide and go, hey, there's Z-values there. And, yeah, I would say, hey, what are the Z-values? Which one of them are unusual? So you need to know the definition. Any Z-score of more than two standard deviations above or below, tall, short. And then Mr. Judge, he's what? He's not unusual in his height. He might be unusual in other ways, but certainly not his height. Okay. So the answer here is a what? No. Okay. What do you guys think? Is that okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, no. So what's so good answer? So let's go back and talk a little bit here about this. Okay, what did you guys learn on your first test by any chance? Did you guys learn anything? Anybody have any idea something that you might have learned? On your first test? After you've taken your first test, you grade it, and you're going to get it back, and you get to compare on your own where you made your mistakes. What did you guys learn by that whole process? Because hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, well, then, you know, you may have a problem. Right? So what do you guys think? What did you learn from the experience? Yes. Yeah, I think that's probably the, you know, that's one thing I want to get at only because it was somebody who made a comment. Um, I don't know if it was this class or some of the other class, the other class. Because um, I gave all tests yesterday. Um, oh, and yeah, you guys get it back. Sorry. Um, some people said, you know what? What you said, Mr. Judge, is true. I said, what? What, what do you mean? What did I say? That even if you got a study guide, it doesn't mean anything unless you what? Do your homework. You guys remember, remember I, I, I warned people about that? People kind of think, no, Mr. Judge, I know what I'm doing, and um, you're the one who's going to learn the lesson, not me. Give me the answers to the study guide. And I'm like, no, won't do it. What? How could you be so mean? Well, because if I did that, then people don't do homework. They don't do what's going to really help themselves. And, you know, they try to just study what I put on the study guide. In fact, they'll probably go to a tutor and say, hey, tutor, do my study guide for me so I can study that, you know. Doesn't work that way. So if you learned any lesson, the lesson is homework prepares you for your what? Tests. The study guide is just a courtesy to remind you that, yeah, these are the things that we did cover, that we did go over. That's the idea. And if you do your homework the night before or the weekend of, that might be a little too what? Late. Does that make any sense? That might be too late. And that's kind of the thing that sometimes people do. They'll wait to the end to do their homework and then think, oh, I don't know how to do anything. And, um, and then you have all the lessons recorded there. And then people aren't going to want to even go back and look at that. They go, no, I'm going to have somebody just tell me. Because I don't want to go look for what I need. Who does that? I'll tell you who does that. People who are what? Successful. That's all. That's all it is. Nothing more than that, ladies and gentlemen. That's all. So, you know, you do want to get to your what? homework as soon as possible. 
Um, even a formula like this, you might say, how do I memorize formulas? Well, every time you use it, you what? You write it down. It's like, how did you remember how um, to write your name? You had to write it down over and over again. You know, so it doesn't matter if the class is statistics or any other class, if you ever have a formula, because you might have formulas in other classes, business, wherever you go, you might have a formula. So how you learn that is by writing it down. And every time you use it, you write it down. So if you notice me, I write it down, right? So that's kind of how I remember too. Um, you actually could do some other things like use flashcards. That's always very helpful. Um, as well, that's a very good thing. Um, but you're kind of learning how to study. And the problem is that there are some people that that don't know how to do these things. And that's kind of why you're here. You're here to learn that. So that's why I talk about it. I do, you know, what I do. I say what I say. And um, hopefully some people understand that. But there's going to be some that just don't because that's just how they are. You guys know, they just, some people probably haven't even gotten in their calculators. You know, they'll conveniently forget on a test and say, hey, Mr. Judge, can I borrow yours? You know what I mean? And it's not just you guys. It's the, you know, I have another class. I always have to give that talk and, you know, I have to give the talk to all my classes. So, you know, again, it's kind of a, an interesting thing that people need to be, what, a lot more involved in their learning than they realize. And that even includes getting the, the calculator. Um, but anyway, so remember, we're going to try this what? Some more. But this time, we're not going to use the height of men. We're going to use what? Huh? The, the weight of women? Oh, uh, your height? We're going to use the weight of women in the U.S., should we go that? Should we go that route? No. <laughs> you say yes. You know what we could do? We could gather data. I have a scale. What I bring usually at this point is I bring a scale. We weigh, we weigh all the ladies. No, no. Okay, I'm just joking. We don't do that. That's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, we don't weigh the ladies. Well, how about this? Let's give you guys another example. Test scores. Let's say you have a mean of, oh, did I get that? No, I don't. I don't know. Let's say the mean is hmm, 103.8 and the standard deviation is maybe 18.6. Okay? So remember... Here's your mean, here's the what? Standard deviation, okay? So we're gonna go with some names here. Oh, I hate coming up with names. This is horrible. Let's come up with a name, anybody have a name? Gilbert. Manny. Amy, Stacy, okay? And this is going to be their test score. Um, okay, and um, test score. Let's say their test score is going to be, oh, I don't know. Let's say... Who knows? Let's say, um, shoot, 122, and then Manny has a 84, Amy had 150, and Stacy has maybe a 62, okay? Now, what you guys see are X values. Those are what? Data values here. You know what I want you guys to do? 
We're going to go over it. I want you to compute the what? The Z-scores. And after you compute those Z-scores, and where do you approximate Z-scores always? Hundredths. Good. Okay. I want to see, do you guys know, or any of those scores, what? Unusual. Should we add another person? Jamie. Oh, what did Jamie get? Maybe a 105. Okay, so we're going to help you guys out with this. Let's see what you guys can come up with. And let's see how this goes. So you guys get to try it out too. So we'll give you guys some time. Use the lucky number eight. Okay, you guys ready for this? So here's the deal. What do you guys write down? What's your formula? Z equals, what do you guys write down? X minus the mean divided by the? All right, pretty good, pretty good. Now, go back and say, but what is the mean anyway? 103.8. Are they going to give that to you? Yes. What's the standard deviation? Are they going to give that to you? Yes. So let's fill that in. Okay. So you say now X will be, I mean, Z equals X minus 103.8 divided by, yes, 18.6. So what do you do now with this, ladies and gentlemen? All of these scores are what? They're X values. They have to be converted now to, to what? Z values. Okay, good, because you have the Z column. So let's look at this in the calculator, right? I'm going to clear this out. And I'm going to back out a bit so you guys can see every detail here. So I'm going to put a parenthesis here, okay? What's the first X value I use? Is it 122? Okay. 122 minus 103.8. Close that divided by what? 18.6. And what do you guys get? What does that say? Right? What do we go out to for Z scores? Hundreds position? 0 0.9. Is that going to be a 7 or an 8? Eight? 8. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. 0 0.98. Now, is that bigger than 2? No. So what do we say? Is that an unusual Z-score? That's a no. Good job. So you have to know what bigger than 2 means and smaller than negative 2. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that one? So what's the next one we're going to do? We're going to do what? 84 
minus the 103, oops, go back, 103.8, close that and divide by, by what? 18.6, what do you get now? What is this? Is that negative 1.0 what? Six? Negative 1.06, good. This is the Z-score, okay? Is that unusual? No. So you say, well, how do I know what's unusual? Anything bigger than 2 or smaller than what? Negative 2. So, so far, the 0 0.98 is right here, right? And the negative 1.06, well, that's pretty close to the negative 1, is over here. This is the idea here. Let's see if 150 is unusual. So what are you going to do? You're going to put what? Parentheses. 150 minus what? 103.8. Close that. Divided by the 13.6. And what do you guys get here? Double check. Oh, sorry, we, it's 18. Let's clear that out. So, 150 minus uh, 103.8. Close that, divided by what? 18 point what? 6. And what do you guys get? What is this? As a Z score, what is this? 2.48. Okay. 2.48. Now, where does that belong? You guys know? Two point four eight is where? Is it like over here between two and three? What do you guys know about that Z score? Is it unusual? Yes. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen. Amy as it got an unusual Z score. And of course, what grade would that be? By the way. What's that? She got an F? What what grade do you guys think Amy would get if that were grades? What is that? Well, aren't the C's right here? B. Guess what, Amy? She has an A. To anything between two and three, is that right? And then over here is the, where the D and the F, you know. But just to kind of go back and illustrate that to you guys. Okay, now what's a 62? Let's see what happens with a 62. So we have what? 62 minus 103.8, close that, divided by... Standard deviations, 18 point what? Six. Ah. What's, what's this Z-score going to be? Negative 2.2 what? Okay, negative 2.25. All right, now let's see. Negative 2.25, where is this? Isn't it between the negative 2 and the negative 3? So is Amy's score unusual? Is it in the unusual range? Is it past negative 2? Yeah, so what does that mean? She has an unusual score. It's unusually low, just like, uh, you know, Amy is unusually high. Stacy's unusually low. Okay, so this is the definition of that unusual in purple. What about 105? What would you guys say here? Close that. You say 105 minus, what's the mean? 103 point what? Okay, close that divided by, what's the standard deviation? 18.6. What do you end up with? Point what? Zero point what? Is that 0 
I think you guys are correct. So here we go. What do you guys think about Jaime or Jamie or whatever? Is his Z-score unusual? No, where is, it, where is that at? That's actually pretty close to zero. It's pretty close to the mean right here. The point being, the score is not what? Unusual. Okay? Because unusual is any Z-score that's bigger than, than 2 or smaller than what? Negative 2. It's in the purple there on that real number line here. Okay, so like I said, um, you could look at this in terms of test scores. You could look at this in terms of any phenomena. As long as you have the mean and the what? Standard deviation, we can now look at what's called relative position. Where, are, where is your score in relation to the group? Do you stand out? What are the people that stand out? The people who are what? Unusual, outstanding, good job. The standouts are what? Unusual. Oops. Yeah. Standouts are unusual. And you have two types. Unusually what? To the left, unusual to the right. One's below the mean, one's above the mean. That purple, by definition, right here, this is the definition of being unusual usual and that really is again also like grading on a curve okay you're really looking for who stands out above and who stands out below because most people are going to be again right in the middle here Whew. what do you guys think easy peasy lemon squeezy yes question <coughs> okay I'll give you guys another question. Who did better on a test? Miley scored a hundred with the mean being one oh five, standard deviation being fifteen. Hannah scored oh we'll say 92 with a mean 95 and a standard deviation of 18. okay now these are just different tests of course because they have different means and different what standard deviation so i want to look at an example like some of the stuff that's on homework that we'll put there for you what you really want to do is, is they really want you to compare the what? Z values. So Z will be X minus the 105 over 15. And here Z will be X minus 95 over 18. So they want you to compare who did relatively better? Do you guys know what I'm saying? Who's doing relatively better? Miley or who? Miley or Hannah? Let's compare Z-scores. And then we'll talk about, you know, what that means. So what's the X value here? What's her score? 100, that goes there. You guys okay with that? What's Hannah's test score? 92, that goes where? Here. So here we go. Parentheses. 100 minus 105, you close that, divided by 15 here. Compare that to, what's the other one? 92 minus what? 
95 divided by 18 here. So what do you guys notice about these scores here? We're going to compare. So the first case, going to the hundredths, is negative what? Is that negative 0.33 for the first? For Miley, she got negative 0.33 here. Okay, what about Hannah? Negative 0.1 what? Seven, is that right? All right. Let's stop and think about this. Who did relatively better? Notice for both students, their scores were not unusual. Is that true? How do you guys know the scores are not unusual? They're not bigger than 2, and they're not smaller than negative 2. So let's see. Who do you guys think did better? Where is Hannah? Is Hannah over here at negative 0.33? Right? Where is Miley? Miley's at negative point what? 1, 7. So that now means you're going to have to know where decimals live. Okay, is that negative one seven to the right or to the left of negative three three? To the right, good. Okay, so between the two, these two scores, right? Who do you guys think by comparing z values? Who did better on their test? Who? Why Hannah? Yeah, she's closer to what? To the mean. Is that true? So she's closer to her mean than, than uh, Miley. So you're right. Hannah did what? Relatively better. Do you guys see how they call this relative position? Okay. You guys see why you can now compare and see what's going on with the two different people? So remember, what did you learn today? You had a Z formula and it's relative position, also known as a standardized value and Z value. And it helps you compare position for various data values. And it's unusual if it's more than two or if it's less than what? Negative two. Just think of Shaq and think of who? Mini me. All righty. So anyway, if I go here to the website, you say, Mr. Judge, what is this? No, this isn't algebra. Do you guys know what this really is? Do we have a, a relative position anywhere? Where is that? Yes, statistics lecture four is E values. So what you guys have now, if I go to the assignment section, this is homework number what? Two. Is that right? So I could list it here. Hopefully you guys know where this is. Where is this anyway? Well, sort of. It is in Canvas. Um, but, you know, sometimes students need... I'm going to put this link as well. Okay? Because what else do you guys have in case you get stuck? You have the tutor. Is that right? So some people aren't going to even know where the tutor is. So I'll put that there. Um, I don't know. This is going to be the what? Um, statistics. Okay. 
Okay, so here's there. So hopefully you guys are aware. I would say hopefully you guys are a lot better aware than you are about how to do things today than the first day and what's going on. I think that's the whole idea, hopefully. Um, people understand where to find things. Okay, and how to do things. All right. Okay, so I'm going to pass back your test, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, but I'll pass your test back here.